What I'm going to show you today is how to do something called a complete ionic equation and a net ionic equation. In order to do this, uh, the things you might want to have nearby are a periodic table, a charge sheet, and there's a new document that you haven't used before uh, up on Schoology for you that's called a solubility chart. So make sure you have that file open and handy as we do these notes, or you're not going to be able to see where these things are coming from that I'm telling you about. So uh, to do a, what's called a complete ionic equation, here are our steps. Step number one is that we're going to figure out what the products are of our reaction. So that goes along with the stuff that we were learning how to do um, about a week ago, where we were learning how to do synthesis, combustion, single displacement, double displacement, and decomposition reactions. We're still going to use those skills as you work through these complete ionic equations today. So you're going to figure out your products. You're going to balance your equation. So you already know how to do number one and number two. Number three and number four are where the new things are going to come into play. Uh, it wants you to figure out the states of matter for all the chemicals involved in the reaction. If there's elements involved, you can find the states of matter using the periodic table in our classroom. Now, I know some of you aren't in our classroom right now, um, but the periodic table in our classroom is color-coded. Uh, the symbols are different colors if they are solids, liquids, or gases. So on our classroom periodic table, the symbols, if the symbol is in black, it's a solid at room temperature. If the symbol is in blue, it's a liquid at room temperature. And if the symbol is in red, it's a gas at room temperature. I'll put a periodic table that tells you states of matter up on Schoology for you to use since some of you are not in the classroom right now and don't have the ability to look at that. Uh, if you have a compound and you want to know the state of matter on that compound, you're going to use your solubility chart for this. So let me show you how that solubility chart works. We'll put that into play and see how that, what it's going to look like and what we're going to learn from this. So our solubility chart is written in such a way uh, that we can determine whether or not our substance is going to be soluble in water, whether or not it's going to dissolve in water. And just be careful when you're looking at this chart. Uh, this chart is written with the word soluble on it. Soluble means that it can dissolve in water, right? And if it can dissolve in water, another term for that is aqueous. Sometimes when people hear the word soluble, they hear in their ears, they think solid, and that's not what that means, right? So if you see insoluble, that's when your substance is a solid. So let's learn how to use this chart. This chart is written in such a way that you usually determine the solubility of your substance by looking at the anion piece of your substance. So for example, um, if you have anything with nitrate in it at all, it could be potassium nitrate, magnesium nitrate, aluminum nitrate, iron 2 nitrate, anything with nitrate in it at all always dissolves in water. It's always soluble, no matter what cation you put it with. If you look at uh, chlorides, for example, if I said Tell me about the solubility of magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride, what you would do is you'd say, okay, here are my chlorides. Let me look at what it says with chlorides. If I put chlorides with a silver ion, a lead plus two, mercury plus two, or this copper plus one ion, it would be insoluble. Chloride with anything else is going to be soluble. Since magnesium is not part of this list of insoluble ones, it falls into that all other category. So magnesium chloride must be soluble. If you were asked to say the state of matter for that guy, we would say aqueous. If I said, tell me about the solubility of iron three carbonate, you would go down your chart and find those carbonates down here Iron carbonate is soluble with alkali ions, 
And if you forget what the alkali ions are, they are listed up here at the top. So carbonates with alkali ions, hydrogen ions, or ammonium ions are soluble. But iron three carbonate with anything else is insoluble. So what you would put as your state of matter, if you had iron three carbonate in your reaction, you would call that a solid. Some of these ions up here, some cations are always soluble. Those alkali ions, always soluble. Ammonium, always soluble. So you basically just have to find your combination of whatever cation and anion you've got, and then look over to the right to see what it's declared. And then that will tell you soluble is aqueous, insoluble means solid. Now that we know how to use that chart, let's see how we can uh, use this in a reaction.